Oh God. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Today is a very interesting day on Acorn Acres. We're gonna be processing our meat birds for the first time. Um, we've done meat rabbits before, but this is our first time with chickens. So it should be interesting just to kind of see the difference. Um, so we have all of our stuff up here. We're set up over here. Um, when I did meat rabbits for the first time, the biggest mistake that I made was not having a sharp enough knife. So we've definitely got that covered now. Um, and I also have some pretty sharp uh, shears for the legs. Um, and then we've got our bucket over here for the innards and feathers. Um, we have our kill cone that we made out of a plastic jug. We just cut the bottom out and then the top. So you'll just stick the bird in this way with their head out. And then my sweet husband is going to be the mercenary today. And then um, I think we're gonna process them two or three at a time. We've got 17 birds total, so um, should go fairly quickly. Unfortunately, there was a big rain last night, so the chickens are really muddy. We tried to like give them a little bath before we started processing them, but the mud is just like glued to them. So um, that should be interesting to kind of work through, but um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so we just did our first bird, just the um, dispatching, and we couldn't get the breast of the bird. Like the breast was getting stuck here and the neck wasn't getting through the hole long enough. I don't know if it's just because our birds are so thick, but we heard that this was like a good idea as far as the cone. I don't know, it just didn't work for us. So we ended up getting the pellet gun out and we're using that method of dispatch. Okay, so we've got about six more birds to do. We didn't film the first couple birds because we were kind of just trying to figure out what we were doing. Um, we obviously had to switch our plan up a little bit because our makeshift kill cone didn't work. So we have been using the pellet gun and that has been working pretty good. Um, the, the most effective way we've found with the pellet gun is to shoot from the side um, and that seems to do the trick on the first try. Um, like straight back from the eyes. Straight back from the eyes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got our feet soaking over here, um, just in water, just to kind of loosen up any dirt on them, so I can scrub them really good before I boil them up for the dogs. And then we've got all of our um, livers and hearts in here that we're going to use for fishing. Um, I would say that the what are these knives called, babe? That you got? like filet knives, filet for, knives fishing. for fishing yeah. when tom went to the store and asked the guy he said i was looking for a buck knife and then they were basically sold out and needed something really thin and long and i went to walmart and got these a two pack for four bucks and they're pretty sharp very sharp yeah. and they cut through bone and cartilage really good the best part is, is that they're long and thin so that you can get into the tight spaces and get the tendons cut where you need them. We haven't need the, needed the chicken shear or the kitchen shears at all, uh, which I was kind of surprised. But um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and just show you what we're doing here. The chickens, like I said, are really quite dirty. First we were trying to hose them off and kind of clean them before we started, but it didn't really seem to matter and it was stressing them out too much. So we just kind of fixed that and we'll just have to make sure we really clean the meat really well. Um, I think next time I'd get some kind of like butchering gloves. I would have ripped it by now, but I didn't think about gloves at all, originally. I don't think I would either, but we're skinning them rather than plucking them as you can see. So we're just cutting off the appendages first and then the skin kind of just peels off. 
did get a pan out here, which has been useful keeping the flies away. And I've got a weak stomach and I keep dry heaving. So it's kind of keeping this, like the hot smell of meat blood. or blood. Yeah, you definitely smell blood. Tom hasn't had any issues with that first chicken. I was like, <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. I just kept dry heaving. And then they keep pooping on me. Yep. We are the poop target. The poop target. We use the feet as dog oh. treats. Dogs love them. We haven't done chicken yet. We've used them on pheasants. Pheasants. We've done dogs pheasants. love the pheasants. This is our first time ever processing chicken, so. I mean, if you could do something different the next time, what would you do? Get a kill coat? Yeah, probably make it easier. Just because it's an actual, shooting, I think a need pellet, a large. shooting a pellet gun at them isn't ideal. But like, these are, these chickens aren't used to being around people, so they're, so they're very much so, like, they panic. Yeah, well, because we didn't want to be attached to them. We didn't want to be attached to them, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't really handle them a lot, so yeah. Catching them was okay, except they, like Tom said, they panic. And then they poop on them. I don't know, like, if we were to process our laying hens, well, yeah, I think they'd be happy. Yeah, they wouldn't be panicking as much around like they're used to the dogs. They're used to, we used to us, used to the kids holding them. So you can just stick your finger right in the membrane between the skin and the meat.
bigger. I feel like when they're bigger it's easier, it takes more time, but it's easier to find your lines and make your nice cut, clean cut. Figure it out. No, but we're not pros. No, we're learning. <laughs> 